All right, let's turn now to Capitol Hill. The momentum is building for a stock trading ban. Axios reports that Senators Elizabeth Warren and Steve Daines have reached a deal on a bill that would ban lawmakers and their spouses from owning and trading individual stocks. Of course, a lot of Americans are on board with this. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is now getting on board with the ban. She's saying a congressional panel will review the options. Pelosi, of course, has been one of the targets of this push as she and her family have benefited off the stock market investments. There's been a lot of talk about her and her husband, John. So obviously, um, we will be watching that story because people want to know. Yeah. How can they get this inside information and not be penalized but reap so much in profits? We'll hear from Nancy Pelosi today, hopefully at her news conference. Let's get over to congressional correspondent Kilmeny Ducart now, who joins us live from Capitol Hill with more on this. Hey, Kilmeny. John and Bianca, great to hear from you. Speaker Pelosi and House Democratic leadership are a apparently looking at how to write this right now. But rather than looking at the legislative proposals already out there, they may be looking to amend the 2012 Obama-era Stock Act, which currently calls for lawmakers to disclose their trades. But now it would look to ban lawmakers from trading. Here's what House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said in her press briefing this week. We have to tighten the fines on those who violate the Stock Act. It's obviously not sufficient to deter behavior. Well, notice how she didn't actually answer part of that reporter's question, which we didn't hear in the audio there. But the reporter had also asked whether that should apply to lawmakers and their spouses, which is what a lot of this legislation has been calling for. She didn't answer that. But even so, this statement that we heard from her today does signal some sort of a reversal from her original statement in December, where she said that lawmakers should be able to trade and that this, this is a free market economy. But interestingly enough, there are two bipartisan bills in the Senate. Lawmakers seem to favor one of those that's a little less stringent. That would be having lawmakers put their assets into a blind trust. Uh, but in terms of that legislation that's happening in the Senate, there is support from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer on this and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. All right, Kilmeny Ducar for us live on Capitol Hill. Thank you, Kilmeny. Let's welcome in now Senator Roger Marshall from Kansas. He's a medical doctor, also served in the Army Reserves for seven years. Senator, great to have you with us. John, good to see you. Now, this is an uncomfortable situation for the House Speaker to be in. I wanted to get your assessment, though, on what you think about this. I mean, the, the loophole in the Stock Act from 2012 was the spouses. And everyone wondered, you know, if I'm in Congress and I get some kind of information and I tell my wife and she wants to trade stocks, then there's nothing, uh, you know, uh, wrong with that ostensibly, but what do you think about amending that and where does this go from here? Yeah, John, we have to do something. Obviously, Speaker Pelosi is abusing the system. She's found a way to cheat and get away with it. Hunter Biden found ways to cheat. Uh, let's pivot now and talk about uh, Republicans, the RNC versus what Mitch McConnell said yesterday as it relates to January 6th. Here is the minority leader's take on January 6th. We saw what happened. It was a violent insurrection for the purpose of trying to prevent the peaceful transfer of power after a legitimately certified election. McConnell's comments came in response to a question about the Republican National Committee censuring Liz Cheney and Adam Kensinger, who are on the committee. Also, the RNC saying that this was legitimate political discourse. Now, this seems like the RNC statement, if you read it, differentiates between the people who showed up peacefully and those who didn't. Mitch McConnell doesn't seem to be doing that. I just wanted to get your take on what the minority leader said there. You know, I woke up this morning thinking about this a little bit, and I remember back President Reagan's 11th commandment, thou shall not speak ill of your fellow Republican. Uh, this is what happens. The press is going to blow it up, take it out of, out of context as well. Listen, America is waking up this morning, and their heads are exploding when they're learning about crack pipes, that this government is funding crack pipes for crack heads. When we just finished up 15 town halls last weekend, no one has ever brought up uh, the Republican National Committee to me. I didn't know who the Republican National Committee was till after I was elected for Congress four years ago. What Americans want to be talking about is big government socialism and, and, the, and their policies that have created inflation and an attitude of lawlessness. So I, I really encourage 
all Republicans to stop forming this circular firing squad and focus on the real issues and the real menace to that this country. And that's Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and their leftist radical policies. Do you think the Capitol Police is up to the job of protecting you and your colleagues in Congress? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, we met with the chief this week. Um, they, they, we are, we're in good shape here. I, I'm son of a police officer. I'm constantly ass assessing what, what my vulnerability is. I, I think we're in great shape here. I have full faith and confidence in the Capitol Police. Uh, and again, we go back to January 6th. I didn't even go back there, but President Trump said there was problems. They had all the signals that there was going to be problems. He asked for 10,000 National Guards. But to answer your question, yes, I have faith in the, in the Capitol Police. Well, I appreciate your candor on these topics, Senator. It's not easy to get uh, Republicans to talk about this, but it is important. I know a lot of our viewers care deeply about what's going on there in the Capitol and the safety of you and your colleagues and our nation as a whole. Thanks so much, Senator Roger Marshall from Kansas. We appreciate it. Thanks, John.